All right, welcome to another tutorial, this time on tileable textures. Let's get into it. All right, so this definitely relies on accuracy. So what we want to do is make sure that we have that in check. So what I want to do is go over down to insert and I want to insert a plane, just a straight up plane. We don't need anything else or that we don't need any of these things. So I'm just going to delete that, press OK. And we need this as a sort of base template and then we will create another one so insert another plane and that plane will just move it by pressing w right moving that forward and then we also scale this up so first one hold on alt click on this make sure it's right in the middle right and it should be and i'm just going to scale that up uh, just a comfortable amount right so there's a bit of space in between there now this template will be the thing that we use to size everything and this here will be the actual base that we use to draw on or sculpt on in this case now that's one of those things we also want to zoom out a little bit and you can see the canvas is not square the canvas is a bit rectangular so to change that we're going to go over to document we're going to uncheck this pro and make sure we choose a width and height that makes sense so uh, 1020 or 2048 whatever you want so i'm going to go for 2048 by 2048 and of course you can go smaller or higher whatever you want and then we're going to press resize we're going to say yes and that's going to resize everything you need to zoom out all right, and that's a bit wonky. It's gonna press Control N to get rid of that. I'm gonna press, or I'm gonna click and drag, and then press T for the edit mode. The edit mode, by the way, is over here, right? T shortcut. Now, if we just press F, that'll be lined up properly. But again, we want to line the template, not the base, but the template. And what I like to do is just use the transparent mode. So now we can kind of see what we're working with. So if we press F to frame that, it's framing the template. Now, if we go over to base and we can get out of transparency mode. We can now sculpt on this thing, uh, for example, so like this, but that's very low poly, so we wanna press Control D a few times. Uh, let's see, yeah, 200,000, that's fine. Okay, that's the first step, just to set everything up. The next step would be to go on over to brush, and then click and drag this over to dock that, because we need that. Next, I wanna go on over to curve, and then wrap mode needs to be on one. Now this wrap mode needs to be enabled for every brush. So I'm going to use the clay buildup. So I'm going to make sure that's on one. I'm going to use the smooth brush. So shift and I'm going to make sure that's on one. Okay. And I'm also going to use the damn standard and make sure that's on one and the trim smooth border brush. Make sure that's on one. I'll show you where to find this in a second. But first we just want to start off with the damn standard and then just create some things. And if we move here, you'll notice that, ah, okay, it's tiling. Okay. So if I do this, right. Stuff like that happens. But if I go to wrap mode two, oh, you can see it's even more tiling, even more tileable. Um, it's the same thing, it's just more, but we don't want that many, that's a bit much. So unless you're a master, you can keep that on two. But we'll keep this on one. So let's just draw some separations for our rocks. And that's what we're drawing. In case you're wondering what that we're actually doing. Again, we're working on base, which is bigger than template. My right? template is just to give us that F space, right? Just to frame things. That's this here, by the way, in case you're wondering where that is. So we just want a very basic sort of template, okay. So something along those lines. Then we can go to our clay build up. Again, make sure wrap mode and we can build this up. All right, so after you have a blob of mess there, right? What you can do is use the trim smooth border brush and this is really the brush that's gonna give us the magic of the rocks. Now to find that, just press the comma key, go on over to brush Okay, we're gonna go to our trim brushes, which would be T. Okay, and then look for the trim smooth border brush, which is this one over here. Again, select it, make sure that your wrapping is on one, so it actually works with this brush. Okay, I'm gonna press the comma key. I have it down here. Uh, you can have a look at how to create your custom menus in one of my other videos, but for now, we're just doing this. So I'm just, right, clicking and dragging, and I'm holding Alt as well for some of these areas. Just really quickly, I mean, obviously, I'm not, you know, going crazy with this. The whole idea is just to get the concept across. Uh, you can obviously spend more time on yours. All right, just because I was moving around quite a bit, I'm going to go back to my template, press F. All right, um, that should be fine. I'm going to go back to our base and maybe one more control D just to make sure everything's smoother. Again, spend more time on this. Obviously, it's not like the best looking rocks here. Back to alpha over here. Right, alphas over here. We're gonna to go to transfer and you wanna say grab dock. This will take this and make an alpha out of it. So grab dock, right? You can see it over here. And it actually overrode my trim smooth, but that's fine. 
if you want to undo anything you've done to your brush just go down to brush reset all brushes and that'll do that so i want to go to my clay build up i want to go on over to a uh, hold on spacebar go to my brush alpha select the one we just got right under the alpha menu we can go down to modify and we can add just a little bit more contrast to that uh like there you can see there right okay don't don't go too crazy yeah that's good enough Okay, and then what I want to do again, hold on spacebar, click on freehand, go to drag rectangle, and here we have our alpha. Okay, bump up that intensity, and it's better to do it on something else like a cylinder. All right, I'll just zoom out and then make sure, make that a polymesh 3D, control D a few times. Okay, click and drag, and there is our alpha. Not the best looking, but that's because I don't really put too much effort into it. Um, but now how do we know it's tileable? Okay, so there's that. We can try and tile it like that and hope that that works, but that's not really a good idea. What we can do is go here to H tiles for horizontal tiles and go to two. Let me see that tile's fine. And then we can go to vertical tiles and then tile that by two. Okay, and then now we click and drag that out. And as you can see, that tiles pretty much perfectly, right? And yeah, that is about it now again. We can use this alpha, we can export the alpha. So I'll just go back to H tiles of one. Okay, undo that. And then we can go on over to alpha. Oh, it was right here. We can go to export and that'll just export. So I'm just gonna go to my desktop really quickly, call that test. Okay, that'll be that. And then in ZBrush, you can tile things. So we can go on over to noise. We can go on over to surface, go down to noise. And here we want an actual alpha, which is down here in the middle of nowhere. Click on that. And that'll load an alpha i like my test the one that i just made give it a proper name like rocks so here i don't want mixed basic noise i don't want noise well i don't have it anymore so that's fine but we can just bring up an alpha scale and we can go down to strength let's see here we go okay let's bump that up and then alpha scale let's bring that down there we go and the strength should be inverted like that there we go and now you can see tiling so if we just bring that down there we go Right, and there's clearly no seams. I mean, clearly it's a tile texture, but that's because obviously the more you sculpt and the more details you can kind of get rid of, but that's about it. And this is only happening because it's projecting this from this angle here, right? So from here to here, that's why that's happening. It's not a fault, it's just projecting. You can click on UV and kind of have UVs on this, not really, um, but yeah, it's kind of unwrapped, but obviously the UVs aren't proper, so that's what you'll get. And yeah, now you've got this alpha that you just made. You can make tons more. And of course, you want a little bit more depth on these alphas, so I'm just gonna cancel that. We can go back here and really, we just wanna add more depth to this. So, right, push that in more and so on and so forth. Of course, you can just go into Photoshop, take this into Photoshop and just bump up the contrast. You should be, you should be good to go after that. All right, so that's just sculpting it. Let's have a look at maybe tiling tiles, for example, or other textures that you can tile manually. All right, so up next, all I'm doing here is just creating a quick base. All I did was I took a cube, I just squished it down, and then here I'm just dynameshing it. Um, I'm using my shortcut menu, but dynamesh can be found under geometry and dynamesh. And then you can just select a number that's not too high and not too low. As you can see, active points about 102,000. So here, just creating a little bit of difference, and I'm just changing my document size there really quickly uh, because I don't like to sculpt in that square format, it's kind of annoying. But yeah, just using my clay build up here just to build this up and we don't have to worry about the wrap mode. And here I'm just making sure that that tiles up and down, right, twice. And here all I'm doing is pressing Control shift d to create a duplicate, going over to deformation and then offsetting that by minus one on the x-axis and then on the y-axis because I need the four corners to be this exact same tile. So again, Control shift d to duplicate that, move it down. Control shift d again to duplicate these two and then offset that on the X axis, make sure the X is only checked, right? So one at a time, so offset that twice, okay? And then merging these down to now, all four of those pieces are the same. Control Shift D for this piece, moving it. And now we can just play around with the sort of scale of this a little bit. All right, same thing again, Control clicking and dragging to create a copy of that. All right, and then here, just kind of customizing this a little bit more. I'm not gonna go too crazy with the details here, Again, just to kind of show you like how you can tile these things. Again, creating another piece there, right? And now the left side and the right side need to be the same. So the four corner tiles need to be the exact same. The top and the bottom need to be the same. And I'll explain that in a little bit, uh, a little bit better later on. But here, just creating two tiles for the top. Okay, and again, you see I'm not messing with the corners, right? So I'm just creating a duplicate of this. And then again, moving that on the offset on the X axis twice. So that's the exact same tile 
try not to dynamash that again make sure it's the same piece right you want to mess with that uh, you could switch on wrap mode and then right um, customize that if you want but for now i'm taking the top piece duplicating that and then offsetting that on the y-axis and now merging everything and then just taking this, these pieces here and the middle can be random it really doesn't matter too much all right, and just to visually explain that concept again, the left side and the right side need to match, the top and the bottom need to match, and of course the four corners need to match, so they all need to be the same. So the top, the bottom, left and right, and of course the four corners need to be the same. Now if you just want to tile things from left to right, then of course the, the left and the right side only need to be the same, the top and bottom don't matter. And of course everything in the middle can be completely random. As long as it doesn't touch any of these areas here, the randomness cannot go on the borders basically. So yeah, I think this is a pretty good visual representation of top, bottom, left, right, and then the four corners. You can do this with pretty complex stuff, right? You can have a bunch of rocks lying around on the floor, which look very random. But again, the top and bottom rows of rocks, and again, it could be like a hundred of them. As long as you just keep these these rows here the same, and the left and the right, and this rock, and this rock, and this rock, and this rock are the same, you'll have no problem doing it. So as long as you understand this concept in its small, simple form, you can do it in a pretty large format. It really doesn't matter. So as long as you understand this, you'll be good to go. All right, and just another bonus tip for you guys because I'm such a great guy. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is just quickly show you how you could use this in like something like Substance Painter or Marmoset, basically some texturing uh, sort of software program. Um, right, so firstly, what we wanna do is go on over to Z plugin and we wanna go on over to Destination Master Suppose we want to decimate or rather pre-process current. This is 3 million, so it's going to take a second. So Z plugin, pre-process current. Okay, so that pre-process took about 1 minute 20 seconds. Um, again, it's 3 million polygons. So why are we doing this in the first place? Well, we want to create a high poly to use with a low poly. So we have the low poly, that's this template piece. The high poly is 3 million, which is way too much. So what I want to do is decimate that by 10%. And again, what it's going to do is it's going to reduce the file size or the polygon count. So there's quite a few here, as you can see. We don't need that many, especially with something as uh, low detail as this. So we're going to go on to Z plugin. We pre-processed already. We can say decimate count at 10%. Right, that'll decimate. That'll only take a second, right? And as you can see, 300,000. We can go lower if we want, but I think that's good enough. So for the template, what we need to do is rename this because Mama said needs proper renaming. So we'll call these bricks underscore low. All right, press enter and then bricks underscore high. And again, make sure you spell it properly. So high like that, lowercase. So underscore low, underscore high, all in lowercase. The bricks can be in uppercase, it doesn't matter. It's the part after. So these need to match bricks, bricks, and then low and high need to be low and high. All right, so that's good. And yes, you need to unwrap this piece, but this is already unwrapped. How do we know that? We can go to Z plugin and yes, Z brush does unwrapping. So you can go on over to UV master and make sure symmetry is off. And if you, if you say flatten, uh, you can see the UVs here. So this is flatten and that's fine. So we go back to Z plugin and then unflatten. But if that wasn't the case, you can go to Z plugin and then just say unwrap, make sure symmetry is off and you should be good to go. Okay, now what we can do is go to Z plugin once more and then we go to FBX import export. I just want to export the visible, okay, and then as an FBX obviously and then export. Okay, I'll go to my mama set and then bricks we will call this uh, combined. And yeah, you don't have to do it, you can do it all at once. Combined. Okay, that should be good to go. And then we go into Marmoset and then we'll go to new bake project, which is this one over here. Click on that. And then we wanna go on over to the um, load. <laughs> Can't find anything. Bricks combined, choose this one. Okay. And if you named everything correctly, everything should show up. You're probably thinking, okay, where's the high? We just have to show it like that, All right? And what I do wanna do is I should have moved this just a little bit. So press W, move that just a little bit forward. About that much maybe yeah it should be fine you can always move it back okay the baking i don't like the interactive so just keep it to offline next i'll select the low model and then you see this cage here that's basically taking everything uh, from the cage and then baking that and it won't really take any of these details here in fact it'll cut it off so let's just bake it with that i'll see you, so you can see what that does i'll put this on 16k and 32 and i'm just going to bake the normals 
and 4k resolution why not and let's just start and it wants an output path so we'll say here yeah that's fine okay so if we say hide high we don't see anything we need to preview material and as you can see we have that but it hasn't captured everything why is that because if we go to low this cage and if we go back to high switch that onto visible we can just pull that out the cage is going okay i'm capturing all of this all of this finally there we go right so about there that covers pretty much everything that we needed to cover so we go back to bake project and now we can pretty much bake everything because i know that's gonna work so i also want to configure no material id i want thickness and i want position and yeah we should be good to go so normals all of those yes 32 16 bit yeah, I'd say we're good to go, start. Okay, once again, we can hide the high, and yeah, we have it, preview. That should be fine. And yeah, there it is. So now this is baked, right? It's That's just height information, a normal map, and so on and so forth. Um, so we can take this into Substance Painter, paint it out, and again, tile that. In case you're wondering how that works, we can just go on over to Texture, and then just tile this on here. So like 4, for example, we see that works. Right, it's pretty much perfect. Right, there's no seam lines or anything, none that I can see. Ah, uh, yeah, pretty good. So yeah, again, you can take this into Substance, and this, the folder you saved in should be the one. So here we go, Mama set. These will be the, the files you take into um, Substance Painter, right? And you can customize it in there. Now, a few things. You notice that the AO isn't too exciting. That's because... Uh, it relies on proximity and then also overlap and whatnot. There's not much of it here. So if I were to go back and redo this, I would make sure that these things here, for example, move. Uh, right, I would make sure that these were kind of closer. <laughs> Let me go back. Uh, auto group. Right, I would make sure like these are closer. Maybe this one overlaps a little bit more. It's the decimated version. That's why it's doing that. Right, something like that. Right, basically just kind of put these closer together, give it a little bit of overlap, right? Stuff like that, you know, just proper randomness. Mine is obviously very, you know, uh, lazy, but that's the point. But yeah, I'd say that's about it for this one. So like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section. Check out my website, my blog, my Discord. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.